andragogy refers to methods and techniques for teaching adults. Literally, the term means leader of men and compares to pedagogy, which means leader of children. The term was first used in the 1830s by a German educator, Alexander Kapp, and was picked up by another German, Rosenstock, in 1921, who used it to refer to the special requirements of adult education. It was first introduced to English speakers in 1926 by Edward Lindemann, who emphasised education in life and through experience, continuing throughout adulthood. He can be considered an early proponent of lifelong learning. However, the term was popularised when it was adopted by Malcolm Knowles in the latter part of the 20th century to describe his theory of adult learning. Knowles proposed six assumptions about adult learners which determine how teaching of adults should proceed. In the literature you will find reference to four, five and six assumptions. This is because two were added later as his theory developed. His assumptions are, firstly, the need to know. Adults need to know why they are learning something, what the benefits are of knowing it, and what they risk by not learning it. Evidence suggests that when adults know how learning will happen, what learning will occur, and why it is important, they will respond more positively to learning experiences. This leads to a need to include adults in deciding what it is they learn and setting goals and plans for their learning. The second assumption is self-concept. Adult learners have a self-concept of being responsible for their own decisions. They are naturally self-directed in their lives and in their thinking, which may lead to self-management of learning. This has two elements. Firstly, taking ownership of learning in terms of making decisions about what and how to learn. And secondly, self-direction, which includes self-management, motivation and monitoring. Self-concept is likely to be context-dependent, that is, it will vary between different learning situations. The third assumption is experience. Adult learners have experience and that experience is more diverse than is the case with children. Learning can therefore draw on this experience much more fully. However, adults may also have ingrained ideas from this experience, leading to bias or single-mindedness. Adults tend to associate experience with who they are. Their identity is defined in terms of what experiences they have had. All of this means that learning needs to be associated with existing knowledge and learning activities situated in real experience. Learning should be active, constructive and collaborative and learners also need to recognise that sometimes unlearning is required. The fourth assumption is readiness to learn. Adult learners need learning to be timely and relevant and focus on what is useful in their particular context and situation. Pratt identifies two dimensions along which adults vary in different learning situations. Direction is how much assistance is needed and is a factor of the learner's competence in the subject area and their general dependency. Support is how much encouragement is needed from others and is a factor of their commitment and their confidence in their ability to learn. The fifth assumption is orientation to learn. Adult learning is life-centred and focuses on tasks and problems rather than on subjects. So learning needs to be contextualised and experiential learning is most effective. Kolb proposed an experiential learning cycle where learners have concrete experiences of the here and now, they observe and reflect on those experiences, they generalize from those experiences to develop concepts and theories, and they then test these generalizations in new situations. Finally, the sixth assumption is motivation to learn. This may be extrinsic, for example, through rewards and grades, but in adults it is more likely to be intrinsic, for example, self-satisfaction, enjoyment, having choice and control over what is learned, and value, feeling that what is learned is worthwhile. All of this contrasts to pedagogy, where Knowles argues there is an assumption 
that the teacher leads and makes key decisions, that learners are dependent with natural de dependency decreasing from childhood to adolescence, that learners own knowledge and experience is not considered important, knowledge comes from teachers and textbooks, that readiness to learn is focused on what they are told they need to know, that learning is subject-centered, and that motivation is extrinsic, focusing on good grades and pleasing others. Knowles characterised andragogy as a process model of learning. A facilitator considers the activities and steps needed for learners to acquire knowledge and skills, rather than a content model, such as pedagogy, where the teacher decides on what will be taught and how it will be presented to the learner. Knowles' work has its critics. Some argue that the assumptions do not apply equally to all adult learners, who are a diverse group with a huge range of backgrounds and experiences, or even to any one individual all of the time. For example, self-direction can be affected by fear. Lack of confidence can create dependency and reduce motivation. And not all adult learners have a clear view of what their learning direction should be. Others argue that Knowles creates a false dichotomy between adult and child learners, arguing that children have experiences that shape their learning as well, and benefit from contextualised experiential learning. It can be argued that andragogy is not so much a theory of adult learning, but a framework for good teaching. Later, Knowles did adjust his position, acknowledging the need to look at which assumptions apply when looking at a particular learning context, rather than looking specifically at the age of the learner. The andragogue, he argued, even if starting from a pedagogic perspective, will try to move to andragogic practice as soon as possible. This approach can be applied regardless of the age of the learner, and suggests that andragogy could be viewed simply as good teaching practice. The model described by Knowles, while drawn from assumptions about adults, may actually represent principles of facilitative teaching practice as opposed to traditional transmission-focused teaching, rather than applying solely to adult learning.